Hello everyone. So I want to talk about the Doppler effect, but this time instead of a moving source, I want to talk about the moving observer. So here we have this stationary source that is emitting some frequency. So it's emitting some frequency F and the waves are moving away from this at some wave speed, the velocity of the wave, right? And imagine I have some observer over here that is moving at some velocity observer. So let's think about this once again in terms of how this observer sees the wave fronts hit them. If this observer is moving towards these wave fronts and these wave fronts are moving out towards it, it means that each wave front will hit the observer quicker than it would have normally done because in between this wave front hitting it and moving out, this one moves a bit, but the observer moves closer and they meet at some point in the middle. And so it means that when this observer is traveling towards this wave front, the waves actually hit it at a faster rate, hit the observer at a faster rate. So we can use Galileo to say that, well, the velocity that the actual waves that this observer sees this wave traveling at Right? So there's some velocity for this wave that's traveling towards it. The, the velocity that this observer actually sees that wave traveling is equal to the velocity of the wave plus the velocity of the observer. So it means that if we think about the frequency that this observer hears, well, the frequency is equal to this shifted velocity divided by lambda. The wavelength hasn't changed, right? The wavelength of this wave hasn't changed. What's just happened is the rate, the, the, the apparent velocity that this wave is now traveling at. So we see it's equal to the velocity of the wave plus the velocity of the observer over the wavelength. Okay, so we get a couple things here. What's the, so we get the velocity of the wave over the wavelength plus the velocity of the observer over the wavelength. I'm just gonna move this down a bit. Well, what's this equal to? Well, that's, that's the original frequency, right? That's the original frequency f. Well, what's this equal to? Well, we know that lambda is equal to the frequency divided by the velocity of the wave. And so we can write this whole thing as equal to f, right? Which is, which is this first part, plus the frequency times the velocity of the observer over the velocity of the wave. And then we factor out that F and we're left with this. So this is one of our, our second big formula. Um, just a quick thing, what happens if the velocity of the observer is going the other way? Well, there's a negative sign here, right? And it means that there's a negative sign here and it means there's a negative sign here and it means that there's a negative sign here. So let's take a look at this formula. So I got my super formula here. Okay, so what do I know? I know if the observer is moving towards the source, the waves must be hitting you quicker. The wave fronts must be hitting you quicker. So you must hear a higher frequency. So you wanna take your frequency and multiply it by a number that's bigger than one, right? So you use the plus sign. If you're moving away, you know that uh, the wave fronts catch up to you slower and you should hear a lower frequency so you wanna multiply your original frequency times a number that is smaller than one. So one minus something, okay? But this is your basic formula for a moving observer.